Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to be looking at the Framework Laptop 13 which I've had for almost one year. Hi everyone, my name is Robert Meisen and in today's video we're going to be taking a one year look at the Framework Laptop 13. I've had the laptop for almost a year so I thought in this video I'd go over what my expectations were, how the laptop has been and how it fared up based on those expectations and what I think about it overall. For those of you that don't know, I spent quite a lot of time deciding not whether to buy this um, and the roundup was the Framework Laptop, uh, the new MacBook uh, pros, the M1 and M2 series, as well as the Lenovo Carbons, which are really good for performance to price ratio. But the, la the framework laptop does have other things that the other laptops simply do not. And of course, there's a repairability. If you haven't seen my initial video about the framework, then do click up on the top corner. I'll post a link there where you can have a look at my initial impressions of the framework laptop, upgrading it, putting in the uh, RAM and so on and my first impression, so definitely check that out if you haven't already. But if you're on this video, you basically want to know what it's like to live with one of these because you're probably already deciding whether or not to buy one. Before I got my framework laptop, I was actually planning on installing Linux on it. I have been running Linux on it for almost a year now. I'm using Endeavor OS, which is an Arch-based distribution, but there are lots of versions of Linux that work on it really well. And I can tell you right out of the gate, this thing was blazing fast and really good. All the firmware works really good. All the hardware works really good, minus the fingerprint reader, which I had to do a little bit of manual tweaking, but also that works. So I have that working. So I use my fingerprint to log into the laptop. Uh, I do video editing on the laptop. I've done it with Caden Live. I don't have DaVinci Resolve working on it purely for the uh, driver, graphics driver issue, because DaVinci Resolve doesn't work on integrated GPUs. So you need a separate GPU for that. However, I have used an external GPU with this laptop and DaVinci Resolve does look and recognize that and it does work, but I don't use that uh, dedicated GPU here at home because I have the computer you see behind me. I have to say, um, I do coding on this, graphic work, video editing, all the office stuff. I manage all my servers and networking. I use this laptop also at work. Uh, typically at work, we're given these kind of ThinkPad HP Pro books and they're really uh, terrible. So we, um, I use this one, it's my own computer. I take it to work, I plug it into my system there. I have dual monitors as well as a keyboard, mouse, graphics, uh, dedicated graphics, uh, external unit, uh, Razer, um, uh, Core X or something. So I plug that in and then I can get on with my work. I haven't had any issues regarding running Linux. So if you are planning on running Linux on this, honestly, you're not gonna be disappointed. Now, one of the biggest things that this laptop has done it has ruined all other electronics for me. Um, and that goes for some of my family and my friends. They've taken a look at this laptop and it's set a new standard regarding electronics. When I come to buying, I can never buy another laptop. Let's just put it out there. That isn't a framework or like a framework, but also it's kind of set my expectation that most other electronics should follow this. So I am looking at other companies uh, when it comes to uh, purchasing for electronics and hardware. So for example, for the first time in something like 15 to 18 years, I'm considering uh, dropping iPhone. I'm looking at things like Fairphone and so on. Mostly uh, the framework laptop set that standard for me. And so now I can never imagine buying anything. Again, if you're watching this video, you probably already know about the upgradability and repairability of these devices. It's really simple. There's very few screws. The way it comes apart and together, I've actually taken it apart several times to show people how easy it is to take apart uh, and to show them the parts inside. And it's, it's really, you cannot imagine how easy it is. And I've done it several times and the chassis shows no sign of being kind of bent or uh, like it's kind of degrading. It's a really well-built device. So 
even if you needed to repair it, uh, I think it would be difficult to actually damage it. The shell itself is really strong. Um, for me, the shell like chassis, uh, the actual like structural uh, rigidity of the laptop is on par with MacBooks in my opinion. There might be some people who disagree with me on that. Honestly, I think that the laptop itself feels really sturdy. So I think you would actually be uh, hard pressed to damage it. And if you did, repairing it will be really, really easy. So that point alone uh, does make you uh, think, well, do you know what? It's really difficult to buy another laptop. When I was thinking about buying this laptop, there was three contenders, this one, plus the MacBook, plus the Carbon, and ultimately it did come down to the fact that none of those other laptops you can repair uh, and the warranties on them are not as long and that you just cannot get you can only get it with a framework and that uh, fact has made me very very uh, consumer conscious when come to buy electronics because there are other companies also trying to make devices like Fairphone now we can't talk about framework and not talk about cost to performance ratio because if you compare the framework laptop to a macbook pro especially the m1 and m2 series as well as the yogas and the carbons and so on the framework doesn't stack up amazingly it's still pretty good but it it doesn't stack up amazingly to those laptops uh, and i think it's a valid question you know, but if you were to wait to buy the latest and greatest technology, you would never buy any technology. So, you know, you have to buy what you need. And when I thought about buying the framework laptop, I was saying, okay, what am I going to use it for? Light video editing, it handles really easily. It can handle really good video editing, to be honest with you. But to be honest, when I'm doing my video editing, I'm using my displays behind me with my desktop. So it's not a huge question mark for me, but you can buy other laptops, sometimes cheaper and more powerful than the framework. But again, if you're watching this video, repairability and upgradability has come into your equations when looking at buying a laptop. I can't say that I'm disappointed. Uh, the quality of every component is really good. The keyboard experience is the closest that I've got to Mac uh, keyboard, uh, especially the MacBook Pro keyboards. Uh, as close as that as any other laptop has ever gotten. It's a really nice keyboard to type on. If you want something more powerful, like say what a MacBook uh, Pro offers, like the M2 MacBooks, where you can use Resolve and so on, I, I think that maybe the Framework 16 would be the best bet. Or if you've got an external GPU, purely for the fact that Resolve itself does not work on integrated GPUs. So for that, you need an external GPU or you need the Framework 16 with the GPU in it, um, which is not available yet. So, you know, it depends on whether or not those things are important to you. I calculated my cost. I also had to pay import tax on this laptop, uh, which was a couple of hundred dollars more. And honestly, I have no regrets. It was slightly painful to hit the purchase button, but once it arrived, uh, it became very obvious. I showed it to my wife, I showed it to some family, I showed it to my students, and they were all just like, this is how laptops should be. This is how electronics should be. Um, and therefore I knew that that was the right decision. Now, finally, if we're gonna be talking about upgradability and future-proofing, you cannot compare the framework laptop to other laptops. It's just not possible. Um, other laptops can last a long time. I've got some old MacBooks actually that are still working but the software isn't supported. I can't change any of the components in it really. I can't do anything with it. For that fact, even if they have survived, they're not usable, um, at least to the same level. And you can actually upgrade and use the components, the older components. So you could take the motherboard out and obviously put like another motherboard in there and then use the older one for some other projects. So that's really good. But when it comes to future-proofing, it's really difficult to compare the framework with other ones. And I think that that fact alone just means that you are going to get a lot more out of it uh, in the long term. So if you are thinking about getting a framework, I would also take in the long term usability factor, which actually a lot of people don't do with laptops. They, there's this weird thing in electronics where it's like three to five years maximum for electronic usage. Uh, which is ridiculous. My personal experience, it should be pretty obvious by now if you were still watching this video that um, I'm not disappointed. I think that if you are thinking about buying a laptop and you are already looking at a framework, I think that you're already in a certain frame of mind. Maybe, just maybe, you're kind of edging a little bit like, 
What about the M1 or the M2 MacBooks? Or what about the Lenovo Carbons and the and the Yogas and so on? And what it, what about those? And you know, it wasn't easy for me. It really wasn't. I'll be honest with you now, it was really difficult because it's a big purchase. It's quite expensive. But once I spoke to some people, once I was asking some of my students and asked my wife and so on about this extra external opinion, you know, looking down, I was looking at all the technical things, price to performance. And most people turned around and said, okay, but what happens if it breaks? What happens in like three years time? And it's like, yeah, that's a pretty, pretty important point to make. Once I decided and once it arrived in the box and I got it, I knew right then that I'd made the right choice. And if you care about, uh, I want to say the climate, I don't want this to be a political thing, but if you care about the climate, if you care about, care about uh, recycling and reusing electronics and so on, I, you know, Framework is a company that you should support and I think you'll be happy to do so. So my recommendation after one year of using this is absolutely never again buying any other laptop that's not a framework or is not like a framework. Let's put it that way. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed the video. I hope that everyone got enough information about my opinion on using the framework. I hope that it does help some people make a decision whether you buy it or not, depending on what's more important to you. Buy for what you need. Um, if you do like the video, please do press like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see from me. Also, I hit 2000 subscribers over the new year. So I want to thank everyone who has been watching and is still watching the video at this point. I want to thank you all for your support and I look forward to 2024 with all of you guys. As always, I will see you in the next video.